It's my birthday, and what better way to spend it than making a video for my favorite people in the world. Hello 7X fans, and welcome to the Progress Report. That's right, I'm 26 today and I'm spending this day in the lovely area of Nelson Bay, New South Wales. I've just moved back in with my family after an unsuccessful relationship and I'm on the tail end of an alcohol binge. But don't think for one moment that that means I've been slacking off. Before we can get to anything, however, we must get through the news. I seem to be reporting on Smash Brothers more than anything these days, but uh, I work with the news I have. I'm sure you all know by now that Lucina and Robin have both been confirmed for the roster, and that Krom will be appearing in Robin's final smash attack. I, for one, have been crying for the inclusion of Lucina over Krom since day one. Not to be a hypocrite, but do we really need another blue head sword prince? Lucina doesn't have much going for her other than that she's a lady moth, but what she does have is style. Also leaked were some Fire Emblem trophies, such as Thaja, Owain, and Anna. In other news that you may have sooner already got from Serenes, Fire Emblem Blazing Sword was released for the Virtual Console in Europe, which is exciting for us, because it means a potential intake of new fans. And boy do we have some stuff to show them. Chapter 7 has been polished and tested extensively, and you can see the latest build in our FEE3 presentation, link below. Chapter 7X is most of the way to completion. We finalized the map extensions for the opening cutscene, refined Milo's complex AI routine, drafted a preliminary schematic for the map pacing and reinforcement patterns, decided what treasures are to be rewarded, and so on. 9 through 12 have scripts ready to roll, and map designs that the gracious Kitty of Time is processing for us while Fior is on leave. Supports for part 1 are almost completely finished, excepting a few cases for characters that only appear at the end of the campaign. Frankly, all we're missing to complete these chapters is the backgrounds, mugs, maps, and CG screens. And until those roll in, all we can do is make alpha builds and playtest, playtest, playtest. As I've said a hundred times before, most of our day is filled checking and refining minor details that most players won't even notice. The most minuscule of numbers can have a ripple effect that completely transforms the endgame, and we have to be aware of every one. There's a constant battle between convenience and challenge that we have to moderate, and most of it is as simple as changing the way you manipulate items and menus. Some of it is cosmetic, of course, because we have to maintain a strong, cohesive theme across our game, and at the same time, make sure it remains loyal to the brand of Fire Emblem. Such is the eternal battle we wage between bursting free of the franchise to make a name for ourselves, and satisfying the fans who are looking for more of the original series. More than once I've thought about the possibility of respriting all the assets so that we can sell our title as an individual IP, but I feel that such a move would betray the patronage of all of you who have supported us so far. We promised an Elite game, and that's what we will deliver. Though I suspect it might take us another year or two, at the least. I can only hope you are all as loyal to the brand as we are. As for the questions and answers, there's only one that needs to be addressed. When is the next demo? I know I promised a release for FEE3, but each of our staff has had an individual reason for absence spring up during this last term. Now that this interference has passed, we're confident we can bring the promised product to the Nintendo Community Fan Convention next month. So just hold out until then. Jamatane.